this is an interaction. So this is the first time we've done it in the past. What we've done for these webinars is I've had a certain content I wanted to talk about. I'd really I'd much rather make it beneficial for you. So you guys are on here tonight. Uh, whether coaching in general is appealing to you or whether uh, it's appealing to you for being online, I want to add value to your business for the next hour. You'll see a section on there where you can talk back to me by clicking the little green uh, microphone. Right now, Bernie, you're unmuted. Kathy, you're unmuted. Tom, unmuted. Travis, you're unmuted. And Joe, you're unmuted. Bernie, bad feedback. There we go. Can you guys say no, something? I don't, want to, I don't want to do that because we then we might take an FHA down the road. But as of now, the best thing we got is a 10% down. <laughs> Looks like Tom Lenny's uh, negotiating as he does this. Okay. This is open open floor. What's the most important thing we talk about tonight, guys? You guys are unmuted. Bernie, I'm getting bad feedback. Tom, you're negotiating contract. What's the most important thing we talk about tonight? Let me start with this. Um, one, two, three, four. I've got one brand new agent, two relatively new agents. Uh, one seasoned veteran kind of doing a reborn career and one half cap or potential cap around here. So we've got a mix of people sitting on here right now. I need you to type in the question section. What has been your challenge in the last week? Have you guys hit your goals? What is your goals? Kathy Allen, can you hear me? Joe Matos, you can hear me. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm trying to get through this. Fantastic. We got some interaction. Bernie, hey, hey. you unmuted. You can hear me. Hello? Kathy, that's you. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. It's alive! Right. It's alive! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the whole point of this is to uh, give you an hour of whatever you need to know or, or work through or, or figure out, and we're going to go live here. So if we were to create an agenda for tonight, what would it be? What are some things we can accomplish now in the next 55 minutes? Okay. You got some I, think for me, I think for me it's always about time management doing the seminars and taking the classes, but still getting out there and getting my leads and my contacts, um, pretty much getting into the meat and potatoes of it. So it's, it's nice that you guys offer so much to us to make us so successful, and yet getting out there and pounding the pavement or whatever we feel like we need to do to be, you know, like I said, out there getting the meat and potatoes in addition to that is a little difficult for me. Yeah, I can definitely appreciate that. Let me, which, you guys are seeing my other screen. No wonder. No, you see my screen of that. Okay. So balancing learning real estate and actually doing real estate. You need some time management issue. Good. Thank you. Bernie, you had wrote on there. And Bernie, you're unmuted as well. Or you muted yourself. Bernie wrote on there that uh, it's going to be lead generating for listings. Okay. Kathy, why are you here? I'm trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> I think both of those are very um, important issues, and then some of the things you learn when you actually try and use them. I was trying to figure out a CMA tonight, and just you know, navigating, trying to do that. I had to go back and review the videos. So, okay. And there is a lot of information to uh, assimilate. So, example of CMA. All right, Travis, anything yet? You're muted on here, but you can ask me a question. Let's start with time management. This is something that never goes away. I'm dealing with this as a constant struggle for me as well. So I feel your pain. Um, you know, in, in a given month, if we take our two days of weekend that we would like to have, we don't always have, then we only work 20 hours a day. In those 20 hours a day, you've got a certain goal, and I think... Right off the bat, time management is 
creating a should-do list and not a to-do list. So let me ask you right now, those of you who want to be vulnerable, tell me about your time management tools that you're using right now. What are you using to help organize your life and help organize the priorities in your business? Well, I'm using the calendar and I'm doing the suggestion that you suggested. It's sometimes if you don't look at it, it's very hard to follow. So. Okay, <laughs> so you've got a calendar, the calendar that we produce? Yeah. Okay. That, I believe, um, when you look at that, that's just kind of a guide which should be your resource. Right. Whether it's electronically or whether it's paper, I want you guys to have a planner. And this planner is going to be your should-do list. In real estate, you're going to see very common for agents who hit a ceiling in their business to do this. And I know you've seen this before. You've been in my coaching. And this is their production. And this is what they do in January. And then February, they close nothing. And then in March, they close this. In April, they close this. Do you guys know why that is? Because they give up on the uh, important stuff once what's they the, have deals. What's the important stuff? Lead generating. Aha. Uh -huh. new deals. So what's happening is when they have four pendings here in December, all they do is manage their checklist. I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. And they essentially have poor time management. They close, they get a big fat payday, and they wake up every day, and what do they not have anymore? They don't have their checklist. So what is this full of? Lead generate, lead generate, lead generate. And guess what happens once they've got four closings, four pennings again? They wake up with a checklist. You see that? And this happens to so many realtors, and so how do we stop this? is to make this part of our day consistently, right here. So in your planner, Kathy, or anybody else who has a planner and chooses to be vulnerable, what do you have under lead generation? Where do you time block that? I, I time block it between 9 and 12 on the three days that I have to actually devote to it. Okay. actually do it a little bit more than that, but I, I actually outline it and try and stick, I'm getting better about trying to stick with that. I was not real good about that. Okay, so you ideally you plan to go from nine to twelve for lead gen. Right. What gets in the way from you doing a nine to twelve lead gen? <laughs> All kinds of things. I still have I still have another job, and and um, unfortunately they have. Some things that they want for me to do also, which interferes with what I want to do, which is my lead gen to get right. to get clients. I think it's important we're realistic with what we can do, and and for us to say every day Monday through Friday nine to twelve I'm a lead gen. Well, not if you know you're going out of town, not if you know you have an all day training, not if you know you got a closing at eleven o'clock. Then what's the idea that you're going to from nine to eleven be the closing, or are you counting for that? So are we protecting that lead gen? Because we can all plan it. And, and it goes back to time management of we have so much to offer. And if you're using that calendar as your tool, then what are you seeing every day? You're seeing you've got to be at this class at 1130, this class at 1, this class over here in the week. It, it's not managing your time. That's a resource for you. Figure out your own planner. You should only have to look at that calendar once. That's it. When it comes out. And you highlight everything that's important? Oh, no, I don't mean that calendar. I mean the calendar where I try to prioritize the people that I've actually talked to about real estate, actual leads, and try and put those on the top of my list so they don't get all shuffled into everything else. That's the calendar. Well, I want, I want you to think about what do you have that you bought at Office Max? What do you have that looks like, let me clear off these goofy things right here, erase drawings. What do you have right here? What do you have that if I want to look at this for my work week that you can go ahead and accommodate? Now, I used to do it right here. If we look back a couple months, you probably see a little more full. And since then, I've gone to a paper calendar. Right. What are you guys seeing? It's filtering through. What colors do you see? Yeah, the, the green, the blue, the yellow. Okay. So yellow is appointments. Green is coaching. 
for me, and blue is meetings and trainings. Right. Moral of the story is I know exactly what I'm doing and what it looks like. Let me see if I can plug on my webcam here. Um, where's my webcam? Here it goes. Webcam not detected. Let me plug it in. I want to show you guys what I have now. Because until you get this habit, it's going to be impossible for you to try to manage your day. So here you. Something weird is happening. Yeah, something strange is happening. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I plugged in my webcam. Uh, you guys see my webcam now, right? Yeah. Okay. This is it. Same concept. I still color coded. I still know what I'm doing. If you look at next week, what's already done? Lead generation is put up there. I still have the same struggles. When you think about my day to day, it consisted of Legion until 11, validate AVA at 11 o'clock, new agent Mike Walsh at 12 o'clock, validate AVA at 1 o'clock, agent coaching at 2.30, staff meeting 3 o'clock, staff meeting 4 o'clock, coaching webinar 5 o'clock. I mean, it's to the T. So time management I know is a struggle because I've had to adapt to this to make it work. And frankly, if I don't look at what I'm doing every night and say, what's my day look like tomorrow, I'm coming in confused. I'm coming in trying to figure it out and it just doesn't work out for me. So first thing I want you to do is figure out a task, whether it's what you see here in Outlook, or whether it's the, the paper audio right here, that's going to say, what am I going to do, not what is going to do me. So many realtors, they work day by day of saying, what am I, I'm going to wake up and then figure things out. You're going to come to work and say, hmm, what's a good class today? And you're going to look at the class in the calendar. I have my calendar in front of me, and, and you're going to say, Huh, that sounds fun. I'm going to go to that bulletproof sales contract. Well, frankly, if you didn't plan for a bulletproof sales contract at the beginning of the month, you shouldn't be doing it now because you're allowing your business to run you. Because what did we say the most, the largest priority is, Kathy? Lead generation. Yeah. First thing you got to do is lead generate. Now, that's easier said than done because what the heck is lead generation? What does lead generation mean to you guys? Is it just, I put it on there, so look at me, I'm lead generating, woohoo! What the heck is it? What is your idea of lead generation? Making contacts with people that, and hopefully getting people that are interested in either buying, selling, or investing in real estate. Okay. Making, making relationships with people, actually. Okay, that, that's a very good textbook answer. Tell me in layman's terms, what the heck do you do to lead generate? Well, I'm, I'm doing different things. I mean, I'm making phone calls to my sphere. I am calling people that I know, but I find it very boring to sit for three or four hours to just talk on the phone. Uh -huh. down, down, so down. Do, you, do you find yourself kind of planning what your lead generation is? I'm getting better at that. I went door knocking, which I had never done. Okay. And when I'm did you decide to, you were going door knocking? What's that? When did you decide you were going door knocking? I decided, um, well, I had decided a couple, I thought about it a while back, and then I didn't think that that's what I wanted to do. And then I decided that maybe I would be able to meet more people that way, but I, I still don't think that it's probably the best thing for me always. I got gotcha. you. So, guys, here's, here's an example of what may help you. It's what I am yearning to do, what I would love to develop, because for me, I feel the same pain, guys. It's not enough for me to say from 9 to 11, I'm going to legion. It's what am I going to do when I do legion? And I'm going to know every day and every week, what am I going to do? So if every Monday I can make 30 calls to people who've closed with us, and I just do that on Monday, and that becomes very manageable. 
And I know that in those two hours, I've got to complete 30 phone calls. I've got to talk to three agents, ask for referrals, and any follow-ups of things that told people I'll call you Monday. And on Tuesday, I can do nothing but dedicate to online media blast, social media, befriend people online, you write them private messages. Because when I do that in the past, I kind of felt guilty because I wasn't making phone calls. Yet is that important for our business to be visible online? Yeah. Now Wednesday is when to invite two events. I'm going to invite 10 people to an event. More co-op calls. And I've got my top 100 list like what we talked about, Kathy, in the Wednesday morning coaching. I used to find myself when uh, I'd go to the bank, I'd go anywhere, people were handing me two or three cards at a time, take my card. Okay. I'm looking at the card and it's like, what do you want me to do with all this? And about so at this point I feel obligated. I mean, it's not obligated, but I want to make sure I make some sort of a connection with someone before I go, here's my card. Okay. So I sat there, for example, I'm going to keep this Reader's Digest, but I went to the Veterans Administration with Dad yesterday, spoke to somebody for 10, 15 minutes, walked away, and then I had to get the gumption up to walk back and go, hey, I don't normally do this, but, you know, because usually people come up and go, like I said, here's my card. But he was like, thank you very much. He was very open to it. But I felt like I had to make that connection. I wasn't just walking around like that. So when we talk about, we talk about is talking to have not met, which is a 2% return. And the, the studies show that if you talk to 50 people, one of them will say, hmm, funny you should ask. I do need a real turn. Right. And you, before you feel comfortable saying, you know what, by the way, I wanted to give you this, you wanted to build a rapport. Right. I, I think we have, sometimes we get a bad rap. And I, don't, I want to be that guy that they go, you know what, he's somebody that I want to work with. He's not somebody that just gave me three minutes of his time without trying to get to know something about me. And then he handed me his card. Okay. So we call that always come from contribution. The, the joke might be the, the vacuum cleaner salesman door to door, right? Yeah. For the most part, that guy shows up on your doorstep with a vacuum cleaner. You're going, get the heck off my doorstep, buddy. I'm not interested. Exactly. I don't want to be that guy. There's going to be one person who says, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. My vacuum just broke. And like I said, he was like, you know, do what you're going to do. Don't ever back down and, you know, stick to your guns and thank you for the cards. And that was where I felt, okay. And as for knocking on doors, I've done it for the past two weekends, and it's come very easily. It's, it hasn't been a problem. Because Either the difference is you're coming from contribution. Thank you or no thank you. When you're knocking on that door, what's your delivery? What are you saying? Well, I've been doing, I've been doing open houses those past two weeks. So this weekend was, hey, it's, you know, it's Father's Day weekend. I don't know what you guys are up to, but why don't you come down? We have some cookies. I'd like to walk you through some houses and let you know what's, you know, you could take a look and maybe, you know, see if there's anything you're interested in. Maybe I can answer some questions for you. Good. So it's a piece of cake because you're giving something back. So when you meet the guy at the bank, you don't want to walk up to a stranger and say, hey, I'm a realtor. Who do you know? You want to give him something back. Right. You have straight that conversation. So this came up about six months ago, one of the agents of the Wednesday Morning Coaching. And he says, Rick, same thing you said. He goes, how do I just give a stranger my card? I said, you can't. You've got to build some sort of rapport. So I said, maybe when you're at Publix and there's someone behind you who's got a full shopping cart and you've got a little bit, just by you saying, you know what, you've got a lot, why don't you skip me? That just opened a door for conversation, did it not? Absolutely. It's, there's some people I know, Gene Rivers said this, he's a very successful agent in Tallahassee. When he went to the grocery store, he purposely went in the longest line, not the shortest line. Because it allows you to have meaningless conversations. Or hopefully meaningful. Meaningful. It, meaningful. No. Uh, purposeful conversations. And with that, so many of us, I think, are so used to never talking to anybody that it comes natural, yet when somebody talks to us and they do it in, from a comfort contribution or just, oh, by the way, or hey, look, we have the same cantaloupe, whatever that might be, it becomes very natural most of the time. After you open up that simple dialogue, a simple script might be, you know what, hey, we've only chatted for two or three minutes, really enjoy getting to know you, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you my card and let you know I'm in real estate, by the way, who do you know? 
it becomes an oh by the way. It becomes a I started talking with you because you have a lot of groceries and a screaming two-year-old, and I'm going to let you pass. And oh, by the way, I'm a realtor. So I, I think it is important to always keep that in front of mind. And you know what? Sometimes if you've done a great job from 9 to 12, and you just want to go to the grocery store and get your piece of chicken and get home, then do that. So long as you did this job. Does that make sense? This, Craig and I were at an aura event, Craig Delahoy, last Thursday. And the room is full of agents and professionals from aura, and we mingled a little bit. But it was 7.30, and I, I told him, I said, honestly, Craig, I said, I've had an 8 a.m. staff meeting to an ALC meeting to three appointments to an agent interview to a complaint about the broker. I'm burnt. I am just burnt, and I just want to sit here and, and have a cocktail and relax. And, you know, I felt okay with that because I've earned it. And I think oftentimes if you go to these events, if you don't feel okay with it, because you know you didn't do your job that day. And we're, we're kind of straying away, and I love where the conversation is taking us. Going back to time management, don't put anything in your calendar that you hate, because you probably won't do it. And never leave your calendar blank. If your calendar is blank, then just go set a tea time, go golfing, go shopping, just leave. Because they're going to fill in with junk and you become unpurposeful. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I think so many of us have a blank canvas of a calendar because most people only put a to-do list. So if I were to take six-month-old agents and open your calendar, I bet it says what appointments you have, and that's it. What classes are you going to? That's it. And it doesn't tell you when you're going to be creating flyers for an open house. It doesn't tell you when you're canvassing and how long. It doesn't tell you what classes you're going to because you wait until my morning announcement phone call to decide which classes you're going to. And therefore, every day you're thinking, oh, I think I need three generation done because I was too busy going to classes. As new agents, is every class important to you? None anymore. <laughs> yeah, the answer is no. Because yeah. you don't need to learn how to write a contract if you don't know how to make an appointment. Once you know how to make an appointment, go figure out how to write a contract. When I, I did a video last month, and I'll, I'll keep going out again, that had a glitch in the system now. But it was, if you're new, watch this. If you're experienced, watch this. Here's some classes I recommend. But you guys can do that. And if you can't do that, then maybe we'll do that uh, once the July calendar comes out. It'll be part of this program. Here, these are, these are some classes. We'll just go time block with each other. And then when you put 9 to 12 lead generation, what are you going to do in your lead generation? If you like knocking on doors, are you going to do it five days a week or just every Thursday? And over here, are you going to put an open house? And therefore, you have it on Friday, it's Canvas Open House Neighborhood? It needs to tell a story. An exercise that's good for that, if you choose to do it, is write down every half hour what you spent your day doing it. Do it for about a week. Just write it down. 8.30, 9 o'clock, write it down. What would you do? And you look at it. And you say, if I were to time block, is this what ideal day I would chose? If the answer is yes, you probably had a very good day. If the answer is no, you have the opportunity to time block it for the next day and change whatever you'd like to change. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a discipline. It's a discipline because if you don't do it, nobody knows besides you. The only time people know is if you messed up your time block and time management is if you have an appointment with them and you don't show up. Can you imagine, how many of you had this webinar tonight on your calendar? I did. <laughs> Thank you. I did. Because you guys were counting on me to be here. 25 people registered for this, and 7 of you were on here. And that's okay. What happened to the other 18? They forgot. Something else came better. Their business started to run them. At one point, they thought this was important for their business. They let something else get in front of it. I don't know what it is, but the point is be in control. And when you're truly in control, then you, you can... You know, Rick, I, hmm. I went to um, listen to Jenny Weimer. Yeah. Respect her very highly. And she talked about that same thing, about the up and downs of real estate, mm -hmm. and talked about finding something that runs through all of the up and downs, and that it is lead gen. 
but trying to find something that is specific to you that you can build your business around um, to make it more of a constant so that during those downtimes you're still getting um, Jenny has built I mean you're still yeah Jenny has built her business off of 400 homes right off of listing 400 homes and farming 400 homes she's built her business now now if you ask her what's her most lucrative lead generation source it may be her presence on Trulia and Zillow However, how did she get there? She got there through her past clients. Where did her past clients come from? From her farms. You break down to Jenny's one thing is her farm. So when the economy and the downturn hit from 06 to 2010, what was constant in Jenny's world? Her farms. You've got to find your niche because just say I'm going to lead you in every day, it doesn't do it. Because then it's never purposeful. Then what, what are you doing for your lead gen? Write down what are you going to do. Jenny knows what day of the month her flyers go out to her farm. She knows it. It's clockwork. It's a machine. Go create your machine. Yeah, that was that was very um. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. and and here's what's cool about Jenny. She just does it. She doesn't really have to be. She is purposeful, yet it's it's so habitual for her now. It's just what she does. She doesn't have a time block legion because she just does it. Because things don't happen outside of that time. Does that help, Joe? Absolutely. I think it's it's planning your day. I have a skydiver. Well, I can say I used to be a skydiver. I, I still jump out of planes occasionally. I did it a lot in college. When you take something as serious as skydiving, would you consider that life and death? So, so we had a phrase that says, plan your dive and dive your plan. Don't just jump out and wing it and figure out along the way because it literally cost me my life. So I would jump out with six, ten, whatever people, and I would know exactly who's going first, who I'm holding on to, when we're checking in, when we're dispersing in the air, and when everybody's pulling. And I had to follow that plan, and if I didn't, it could cost me my life. Plan your dive, dive your plan. So you guys planning your day, you know, you're sticking to that plan as if your life counted on it. It's a, it's a different extreme, yet it's very similar. So do that. Get your planner that you can say every day, this is what I'm going to do. Here's my day. What's your goal in the amount of appointments per week you guys need to have? Do you know that number? 70. Appointments per week? Oh, appointments. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I no, no, no. I touch base with Dean all the time, um, as you would know. Yeah. And uh, he's like, you need to get ten generations a day. So ten, yeah. So, so contacts. You're talking right. about contacts. Right. Okay. So he's like, if you don't get that, and you're blowing seventy a week, then you're in trouble. How many contacts will seventy a week get you in appointments? Do you know? I do not know. So that's a good number to find out. I want you to track that. <laughs> I want you to track a tally marker. Let me see if I can show you mine in my calendar again. Can you see my can you see my webcam still? You see it still? Flashing in. There it yeah. is. You see in the bottom those tally marks? Yeah. That's my dials. Contacts and appointments. I track it every day. It just I've got to know who I'm talking to. Why is that important? If I don't hit my goal, that comes down to appointments. If I come short by 60%, guess what I'm going to do to my dials? Increase by 60%. If you've got a goal to have one, just say two appointments a week, are you going to conversion of one out of 35? If you are, great. Keep doing 70. You get your two a week. You convert half of those. You convert one a week. You're closing 52 deals a year. Congratulations. If you're getting one out of 100 because the contacts you're making are to Craigslist ads that you're doing, then you're getting less than one a week, and now you're only closing two to three deals, and now you're doing 30 to closings a year. And that's the economic model. Does that make sense? Sure. 
So I want you to start tracking, Joe, of these contacts, how many dials or how many doors are you knocking on to actually have a conversation? And of these contacts, how many appointments are you getting? Because what's the one thing, of anything that you can control the most, what's the one thing in, in real estate you can control? What you do. It's the at-bats. How many doors you knock on and how many phones you dial. You can't control who's going to pick up the phone or who's going to answer the door. You can't control who's going to give you an appointment. But everything's a numbers game after that. And if you get the worst baseball player in the world, as many at-bats as he wants, and you get the best hitter in the world, 10 at-bats, who's going to get more hits? Well, the worst. If, if he takes those at-bats that he I don't know. What's that? Yeah, I said these days, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, because that's yeah, the truth. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I understand your, your, I get your train of thought. So it, it's important that we know what we're doing. Because, Joe, if you go up head-to-head -to, -head to Dean right now in this, you're going to lose. The skill set that Dean has is higher, and it should be. He's been in business for seven or eight years. He closed 60 homes last year. Now, you might get that sweet spot where you win, but you need more at-bats than he does. Yeah. And you can do the same thing he did in one year. So time management, know what you're doing, know why you're doing it, what's your expected outcome. You knock on 100 doors, how many do you expect to answer, how many contacts do you expect to get, and how many appointments. Did you do it? Didn't you? So, good stuff. Let's move on. we got another time block. Bernie, you asked how to lead generate for listings. How to lead generate for listings. You know what? That's, that's the topic, and I'm, I'm, I'm careful with this. Um, it, success of agents is extremely important to me. You guys are on here. You're plugged in. You're saying, I've got to make real estate work. I've got no other choice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take no for an answer. This is me. And you read the book, Millionaire Real Estate Agent. It says listings, leads, leverage. It says every listing will get you two transactions. So, well, the best way for me to do this is go get a listing. Listings to live. All these things. And yet, what's a higher conversion rate? A buyer or a listing? As a new agent right now, it's buyer. Um, and I don't have stats behind that. I know that typically new agents... Your first deal, unless you've got that one in your pocket, will be a buyer. And I feel it's because when you get a listing that people are committed to working for six months for you, you are it. When you get a buyer, people don't feel that obligated for you. They'll give you a shot at it, and it's yours to lose. Um, typically, when clients interview listing agents, they're going to really interview based off referrals, based off of testimonials. And they don't necessarily do all that background information for a buyer's agent. So I say that because I, more importantly than anything, want you guys to get skilled, go out there, make your contacts, and let the chips fall as they may. That being said, I do want to answer your question, how to lead generate for listings. So let me put that back on you. Bernie, I'm going to unmute you. This is your question. And David and Tom, if you want to be unmuted, let me know. David, I'll unmute you right now. That's loud. Bernie, are you there? Bernie's not. Bernie, if you could call in at the phone number, that would be great. I've had Joe and Kathy kind of leading the conversation. Everyone else is very shy or not logged on. So Joe and Kathy, let me ask you guys, if you're going to go out and lead generate for listings, what are you doing? What's your thought process on that? You know, I, I don't know that I do anything different for a buyer versus a listing. Because what are you doing? I just try because I try and talk to people, let them know what I do, and, uh, and, it's and I talk to people at, you know, at the hospital. Perfect. Let them know what I'm doing, and then, you know. Perfect. So buy, sell, or invest in real estate. I don't consciously. So here's something unless, interesting. Unless someone says to me. We, go, we go back to here. Let me get this one. We go to right here, okay? And on Mondays, you're going to follow up from open house contacts. Because you do an open house every Saturday, and you meet 15 to 20 people, and you're good at following up with them, and that's going to take you your time. And on Tuesdays, you're going to do 
um, allied resource calls. You know, Wednesdays you're gonna do something, Thursdays, Fridays. Why don't you put in here a farm? Or why don't you put on here Fizbo's expires? Because if you look at everything here, it's ask for referrals, ask for referrals. What am I doing every day? Asking for referrals, that becomes your constant, that becomes your hospital conversations, that becomes your public conversations. But what am I doing? I'm promoting events. So I think it's okay to prospect for listings as long as you're still doing your constants, your everydays. Does that make sense? Sure. So, so we do this, some listings for lead generation. It's going to be a farm. It's going to be Zillow. Expired. Fizbo's. Could it not be Allied Resources? What's another allied resource who might have a handful of listings for you? Who is it? Or, I'm I sorry. worked retail. So I I worked retail, so I've yet to walk into um, my old building again. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I stayed away for a little while, but I'm kind of like, you know, chomping at the bit. I'm I'm really excited about walking in there again. You feel valid enough? You can hold your own. You can answer the questions they've got. Um, yeah, and the thing is, no, I, I, I kind of like feel um, like I, I do work with, everything is about Keller Williams' team. Okay. So when I, when I announce that I'm working real estate, I'm, think, I'm putting it out there that I'm working for the Keller Williams team, and we um, okay. can help, anything that I can't help you with, we'll team up and we'll work to get you through it. So... You know, I don't act like I own my own real estate firm. Obviously, I don't, but I do work with great people. You know, so I can reach out to anybody in this building and know that if I can't get a response from one person, I'm going to get it from the other. What you said is so key because it ties into what Kathy said. It says you just talk to people in your sphere of influence and be the expert. Because what do we know about listings? We just said it. They're hiring. They're committing to you for six months. And they're going to do their due diligence. And they're going to say, you know, I want to interview my listing agent, so let me ask you. Tell me about your business. Tell me about the market. Tell me about, tell me about, tell me about. And we've got a great team here with a great reputation and with great market share. So I want to pull up something for you guys, and, and this is good for you to know. Let me see if uh, this pulls up here. Don't close. Shoot. We're going to give that a minute to pull I also... Up. Um spoke to Dean about finding a, a lender that could give me information on a regular basis so I could put out a flyer. Well, now she contacts me and I get, um, you know, I get a little, I get a note, I get an email every day or every other day, let me know what's going on on that side of the market. Yeah. So I can inform them what's, you know, what they're, uh, what's available to them, not just, hey, this is what I do. But if you look to buy or sell, this is what I what's out there for you in the lenders market, financing, um, correcting, fixing your credit. Because a lot of people, that's you know, one of the first things that they tell you. My credit is not any good. I, they have no idea of what's going on on the bank side. So I really want to make them feel like, you know what, you're, doesn't mean you're going to necessarily get locked out because you don't have the information. Why don't we get you the information and we'll see if you're already there or if we can get you there to that point that, you know, within a short period of time, you're not paying rent and you're paying a mortgage instead. Yeah, I, I love that because it's allied resource. It's becoming the expert. Let me go back to this page. You're the expert. They're your lender. When you're the expert, people want to list with you. When you don't know what the heck you're doing, they're not going to list with you because they're, they're marrying you. They're counting on you to sell their house in this market. Allied resources needs to be a part of your lead generation to build that up. When I was, uh, my first listing I ever got, about three months in the business, got my listing, I met with the title company. I sat down with them. I said, look, this is where I intend to go. I shared my vision, shared my goals. And I said, with that, I would like a partner who can handle what I'm going to do. And they're just biting on the chomp. And she said, well, where did you get your listing from? I said, here it is. She said, what if I send you... I've had access to banks of everyone who's late and their list pendants are home for their homeowners association. 
here it is. So I target those people. I say, I just listed. I can help you. Blah, blah, blah. List pendants. More listings come from it. Allied resource was that conversation. So you got title, attorneys, family law, divorce attorneys. This might sound awful, but how about something that has to do with obituaries or a funeral home director or that sort of thing? Are we not here to come from contribution? Are we not here to help a family? What's happening to people every day is children are being taken care of their parents' funeral and their estate. You can think outside the box and you can say, I'm going to go over here because I want to do everything I can to help your clients. We know they go into a funeral home. What are they doing for that aspect? A farm? I, What's that's that? A tough one for me. That's a tough one for me. It, it, you know what? It's it, it's not very comfortable. That's why I said it, it's got to be for you. It's a tough one for you because you don't feel like you're coming for contribution. You feel like an ambulance chaser. That's why it's tough for you. Right. And that's in your mindset. Because, in, in knock on wood, I've never had to bury a, a parent. Yet when I do, the last thing I'm going to want to think about is a house. Okay. So if somebody comes in who I already trust or is highly recommended who does that for me, then it's actually helping me. So I appreciate where you're coming from, and this is recording and being on my YouTube page forever, so people can listen to that and raise the eyebrow. The intention is not to be an ambulance chaser. The intention is to say, who out there knows people who need your services? So if you want to stick with lenders, titles, attorneys, then great, but who else out there needs your services? And, and figure that out and have those conversations daily. One of the agents here was able to sit in. I don't know how long she was with um, that person, but they went the whole through the whole process of the title, um, the title company, uh -huh. and she said it was a it was a great process, and I, I want to do that. So yeah, that's that sounds like a good resource. Yeah, um, that's available. Yeah. So when you're making your seventy, how many of them are allied resources? Plot this stuff down. Get your game plan. Plan to dive, dive your plan. Kathy, I'm going to mute you. I'm getting some feedback from you. <clears throat> um, being the expert, I'm going to show you something here real fast. What I just did was took our office, and we're going to search by office type 32828, year-to-date residential homes. So when, when Joe said that he uses Waterford Lakes as a background, these are some stats you guys can do and take a look at. And you can say, this is what we are doing. This is what our office is doing. This year, our office has 13.5% market share. This is 11, more than the next three offices combined in 32828. We have sold in 32828 this year, 129 out of 924. What is that, one out of eight homes are sold by one of our agents? You become valid. You become the expert. Know these numbers. So every month at the team meeting, when I go over the numbers, I don't do it just to hear myself talking, myself patting the back. I'm saying, hey, guys, look at us. This is your story. This is, a, this is your valid. This is how you go out there and gain market share immediately. So I love that you are becoming the expert and that you know what you're doing, which is why this stuff is important. Learning real estate is important. All right. Um, other than that, for listings and those farms, there's Zillow, Expireds, and Fizbos. These people who are raising their hands saying, hey, I need to sell. By the way, I need to sell. That's probably your quickest conversion rate. Just know that it's going to be a lot of dial and smile and keep on going. A lot of scripts, overcome objections, and if that's what you want to do because you love it, then great. I love that stuff. I love this. I'd sit on the phone, I'd stand up, and I'd, I'd, I'd get a rush off of getting that appointment. Yeah, it pumps me up. So... Um, Kathy from Las Vegas, welcome. You're on here. So you came on a little bit late. Uh, we, we pretty much said, what's the important thing you guys want to hear and what you want to talk about today? Uh, Bernie, welcome back. Glad he's back here again. Guys, we've got about 10 to 15 minutes left. I want this to be resourceful for you. What else do we need to talk about? What have I, what have I not covered? What is the what's this greatest struggle you've had this last week in real estate? 
You think of anything? Have you hit your goals? What are your goals? If you don't know the answer to that, then we need to find a way to figure that out. Either come get in productivity coaching with Lena or come see me tomorrow and we'll say, what are your goals? Read the economic model in the Emerillionaire Real Estate Agent book that will help you with your goals. This is the first time really doing this format of Q&A and, and talking things through. The whole point of me doing this is to add value to your business. Was this valuable or was this kind of too much of a cluster and too impromptu to be valuable? No, it was good. You, you worked on exactly what I brought up. That's, I think I was... I spoke up and you, you know, yeah. you definitely, uh, okay. Uh, so you know. knowing that, and I'm going to unmute you now, Kathy, you also spoke up a little bit and Dave Fonseca, you're, you've joined us since then. What's your action plan? What are you going to do this week to make this an hour well invested? I would like to get that, that book going and not plan every single class that's going on with, um, Keller, they're all they're all advantageous to us in what we do, but at some point we got to dig our heels in and you know hit the brakes and go. Okay, I need the flyers. I need to touch base here and there. I need to stop at my old job and find out what's going on with who. Yeah, let's prioritize our day. What's the most important thing you guys get accomplished every day? You think of it. You guys know how to prioritize it. If you if you don't have audio, write it in. Most important thing. Um, make your contacts. Somehow, some way, it's most important. You're gonna have your minimum number. You're gonna use the economic model to figure out based on your goals. Then you're going to know your minimum number you need. Once you do that, go on appointments. After that, education. If you know your nine classes for the month you intend to go to, you can work around that, go on all the appointments or education you want to, and still make your appointments. And you know every day from 9 to 12 you're going to make your contacts. And if you don't make your contacts because you're allowing distractions in or because you're unrealistic with your goals or not as efficient as you need to be, we make adjustments. Because in anything you do, the formula to success is four things. Stop it. It's one, know where you're at. It's two, know where you want to be. It's three, get started. The most important is make adjustments. Because if you start off and you're thinking, I'm going to make 70 point contacts a week, and six months in, you're doing this every week and falling half short of your goal, you make those adjustments. If you don't make those adjustments, you're in trouble. Good, Travis, put an age in. Guys, this is it. This is real estate. And there's a saying, real estate is simple, it's not easy. It's not easy because it's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to say, oh, I, I want to go to this class. That sounds fantastic. Well, you don't get to go if you don't make your contacts. These classes are available resource for you, but the most important thing you do is make your contacts, whatever that number is for you. Go figure it out. Run your business and then make those adjustments and track it. How many doors I knock on? How many, how many of this? How many of that to achieve this? So I'm talking with George Philbeck today, and he says... Uh, his goal is to have 593 listings. By doing that, he should be able to generate an extra buyer for every side, so 1,184 closed deals. And that's on there. And to do that, he knows what he needs to do and how many contacts based on his conversion rates. That's a big number, guys. That's a big number. Um, I got a question back. Rick, what were the hash marks for? Contacts made, appointments set, dials. When you guys look at this, we go back to here and we see do back here. 
Where the heck is that? Where'd you go? Yeah. Dials, eight. Contacts, five. Appointments, two. That's about an hour's worth. And I don't put it anywhere besides where I can look at it every day. And guys, this is me being vulnerable because my goal is to make 20 dials and 12 contacts and three to four appointments. If I did that, I'm crushing my goals. Right now, yeah. not so much. Do that. And, and if you don't have the paper planner because you're electronic, then whatever you do that you keep with you every day, write it there. Because when you're in your car on your way home and someone calls you back, are you not making extra contacts? Should you not be telling that? Because at the end of the week, you know this is my conversion rate. Am I happy with this? I haven't got an appointment in two weeks. What am I doing? Up it somehow. Get some skills. That's it. So tomorrow morning, I am doing a live lead gen. It's a little bit different. This is kind of Q and A. A lot harder to dive in and, and do diagrams. We've had a really good crowd up there. About six to eight people. We'd love to see it, it grow and get more people up there. It becomes a great interaction, a great mastermind, great brainstorm. So I appreciate you being on here. Uh, if you guys want to take a look at some things I've done in the past, I want you to go to my YouTube page. Right here, backslash Bosley Brick. You'll see my past webinars. And my goal is to get this as big as I can, to as many people as I can, to help value. So do me a favor and shoot me an email with a testimonial. Of, of how this was for you. Uh, if it was awful and lousy for you, then keep your comments to yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Let me know. I'd love to make it better for you. And if it, if it was good, if you enjoyed it, if you're going to implement some things, if it even helped you just a little bit, let me know. And I'd love to just share your story, share some testimonials. And this is what I do. This is my passion. I don't sell real estate anymore, so I've got to do it vicariously through you guys. This is what I'm doing. So that's it. If there's nothing else, we're going to get off five minutes early and call it a day. We good to go? Thank you, Rick. Guys, have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All right. Thanks, Rick. Take care.